Hello and welcome to Adventures in BFK. This is Fairy Fanatic and today I'm going to continue on with the next step in our epic quest for merfolk enchantment. So let's go over here to epic quests. Let's go down to our merfolk enchantment and this is going to be day four. So it says welcome to the BFK merfolk enchantment epic quest day four. This is the fourth day of your epic quest for merfolk enchantment. Same thing. Okay, in today's quest, we will explore one of the most colorful and diverse underwater wonderlands ever, coral reefs. Merfolk have been associated with these underwater structures made by living creatures for centuries. You can just imagine merfolk swimming through the clear water amongst the towering reef rocks and making their homes in the maze of coral. For our quest today, we'll be finding some of the amazing facts of coral reefs and the animals that build them. Your reward for completing the fourth stage of this epic quest will be a thousand credits and your fourth merfolk pin, the coral reef pin. Ooh, okay, good. All right, let's see if we can get through this without too many mistakes. All right, a coral reef is an amazing structure. It forms in clear, shallow ocean habitats and is extremely rich in life. The enormous structure of a reef is formed by very tiny animals called coral polyps that exist together in colonies. When the coral polyps die, a stony branching structure is left behind. What is the name of the substance that is left behind which mainly comprises the reef? I'm going to say limestone. That's made out of that kind of stuff. Correct. Ooh. There are two main types of corals. One of the types is a hard coral. The other is soft. The soft corals, such as sea fingers, are not reef builders. The hard corals, however, such as brain coral, have limestone skeletons which, when no longer occupied, make up the basic building material of the coral reef. Go to Audubon's Wildlife Adventure Game in the Waterfall Room and say, I think I see some coral. And we're going to the Waterfall Room. Let's go over to the map. Okay, so we're going to the Waterfall. It's over here. All right, here we are. We want to say this in the room. Look at all the birds fly in. Isn't that awesome? There's a ton of them. I think I see some coral. All right, here's our next, here's our next uh, step in the quest. Coral reefs need shallow, warm parts of the ocean to develop. Their ideal habitats are found in the latitudes ranging from 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south of the equator in the tropics. They prefer water temperatures between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The main places that coral reefs are found is off the southern coast of the Red Sea, off the coast, east coast of Africa, in Polynesia, off the coast of Florida, in the Caribbean, and all the way to Brazil. The Great Barrier Reef, which is off the northeast coast of Australia, is known to be the largest coral reef in the world. How long is it? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna say this. Correct, ooh. Boy, we're doing good today. All right, reefs contain an abundance of undersea life. The coral reef explores a home for many, or provides a home for many animals and creates a very complex, ha complex habitat for its inhabitants. I'm getting all distracted looking at all the birds. Some of the animals that are found living at a reef beneath the waves are such animals as sponges, reef sharks, groupers, clownfish, parrotfish, sea stars, crabs, sea snakes, snails, and such creatures as anemones, octopuses, and clams. Go to the gate of the castle and say, Coral Reefs Rock. Oh, look at these birds. Aren't they awesome? I love this place. Okay, we're going to the castle gate, which is in medieval, so we should be right there. Straight down. Here we go. Say it in the room. And here's our next step. Okay, reefs form under different circumstances and in varying conditions that can be classified into types. One type of reef is called a fringing reef. It is built by the coral along a coastline in the shallow waters of the continental shelf. Another type, a barrier reef, also grows along a coastline, but exists a ways out from shore, separated by a deep lagoon. They earn their name because they make a barrier between the lagoon and the open ocean, which can make navigation difficult. A coral atoll is another form of reef that is comprised of large rings of coral built fringing the shore of a volcanic island. When the volcanic island sinks, the reef continues to grow and is left as the remaining structure for the island. The largest coral reefs in the world are barrier reefs. What is significant about the New Caledonia Bar Barrier Reef? You know what, I'm going to say this one here. I don't know why. Sorry. that 
Wow, I guess we should have picked that in the first place. Okay, that's great. There are many other forms that coral reefs take, and most of the larger reefs include many of the forms in the larger structure of the reef. For example, the Great Barrier Reef is composed of ribbon reefs, deltaic reefs, fringing reefs, lagoonal reefs, crescent, crescentic reefs, and the planar reefs. Islands called coral caves are also included in the reef system, which were formed when the sea level rose to cover continental islands and the coral overgrew the submerged island. Most of the islands in the Great Barrier Reef are formed on planar reefs. Go to the first room in the Australian Outback and say, let's, let's look for fossils. Okay, first Australian Outback room. That's over in Australia. All right, corals that grew in top tropical conditions do not grow at depths over 165 feet. Also, they do not inhabit cold waters of temperatures below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. A type of coral called deep water coral or cold water coral are found all over the world. However, not much is known about them. What is known about cold water coral has primarily been learned from fishing companies and companies searching the ocean for oil and gas. The corals resembling, resemble tropical corals because they provide shelter for many other types of organisms. The largest cold water coral reefs are found off the coast of what country? China seems kind of... All right, let's try Norway. Ah, correct. All right, let's see. Cold water corals, like tropical corals, require something hard to attach to in order to start building. They need surfaces such as rocks or sea mounts on which to grow. They also need a current to provide zooplankton for their food and to help keep the coral clean. The deep water corals can live at depths of 130 feet deep to almost 5,000 feet deep. They grow more slowly than the tropical species due to the lack of sunlight reaching them. The deep water corals must catch their food and have small tentacles on their polyps which, ca polyps, which capture food and stun their catch with venomous stinging cells called nem nematocytes. Nematocysts? Nematocysts. Anyway, go to the inside of the livery stable of the Wild West and say, hey, that stings. Inside of the livery stable. Okay. Go to inside of the livery stable. Right here. Ah, okay. Like the giant clams, corals obtain much of their nutrients from a symbiotic relationship they have with a single-celled algae called zooxanthellae. The algae, the algae engage in photosynthesis and thereby produce organic nutrients that are ingested by the coral polyps. Because the coral has the benefit of the algae, they can grow much more quickly, which enables them to build reefs. The water needs to be clear to enable as much light as possible to reach the algae. They must stay in the photic zone. Where is the photic zone located? There, correct. All right, this should be the last frame here. All right, there are many plants in a coral reef as well as animals. The primary types of plants are algae, seagrass, and whatever those things are. There are many different types of seagrass which come in different colors and seagrass is the only flowering plant in the ocean. The seagrass has such names as turtle grass, manatee grass, and shoal grass. Even though the algae is necessary for the growth and sustenance of the reef, if too much algae is in the water due to a high level of nutrients present, the algae can actually smother the coral. Go to the Victorian Park and say, now where can I find some turtle grass? All right, let's see our thing in the room, and it says press continue to finish the quest. All right, thank you for playing the VFK Merfolk Enchantment Epic Quest Day 4. Your prizes have been placed in your inventory. All right, let's go back to our room. We should have a pin, and it's gonna be a coral reef pin, so this must be it here. Ooh, very pretty. All right, so we're wearing it. All right, and that's it. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you like the videos, pl uh, please go ahead and like it. 
If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can always ask me a comment. That way, if you subscribe, you'll always know if I put out a new video. And if you want to, you can leave me, leave me a comment or a question and I'll be glad to get back to you. So thank you for joining me again and I'll see you next time. Bye.